Svatovsky sector of the front, offensive of the Russian armed forces from Vladimirovka. In recent months, on the Svatovsky sector of the front and in the eastern part of the Kharkov region, all Russian military operations either boiled down to unsuccessful attempts to take Sinkovka, or to a positional struggle for the left bank of the Zarebets River. Yesterday the fighting in this area intensified. On January 18th, after delivering a massive artillery strike, Russian troops launched an offensive from Vladimirovka towards Krokmony and Tabivka. Having crossed the railway, units of the Russian armed forces managed to advance half a kilometer to the west, taking the N-26 highway under fire control. The battered forces of the 103rd Territorial Defense Regiment of the Armed Forces of Ukraine are defending in this area, so the Russian troops did not encounter significant resistance. The goal of the offensive in this area is not just a positional struggle, but access to the Oskol River in order to further facilitate the advance both near Kupiansk and along the Zarebets. Battle for Avdivka, Breakthrough from Kamenka Despite the fact that it was not possible to surround Avdivka before the new year, no one stopped the fighting at the site. The main attention is paid to massive attacks on the locations of Ukrainian units by aviation and artillery. But despite fire control over the routes of advance of Ukrainian formations, units of the Ukrainian armed forces still retain the possibility of carrying out rotation in positions. A couple of days ago, Groups from the 110th Infantry Regiment of the Ukrainian Armed Forces were transferred to Avdiivka. On the northeastern outskirts of Petrovskoy, Stepovo, clashes are still ongoing. The village is in the gray zone. The Russian Armed Forces are focused on expanding the control zone east of the Avdiivsky coke plant. There is no assault on the plant yet but the Russian armed forces are advancing along the settling basins to the southeast of the treatment facilities and in the fields in the direction of the Avdivsky Sand Quarry, Blue Lakes. Russian reinforcements were deployed from Kamenka to strengthen the onslaught. On January 18th, they managed to reach the outskirts of Kolosov and Levinevsky streets. The fighting continues west of the Donetsk Filtration Station and the industrial zone in Dukhovnest Park. From the Novodivsky Pond, the Russian armed forces are advancing along the northeastern outskirts of Pervomaisky. To the north of the Apatny armed forces of the Russian Federation, they are not abandoning attempts to occupy the gray zone under the Kimik Micro District. No one has removed the task of blocking the fortified area along the Stepovoy Lastikino Severno line, but so far it has not been implemented. Apparently, the command of the Russian group of troops decided to focus their main efforts on clearing the Dacha sector around Avdivka and cutting off the gray zones. The Ukrainian sources mirror the situation. The situation in Avdivka has worsened. Taking advantage of the weather, the Russian army broke into the south of the city. Analysts of the Ukrainian Armed Forces Military analytical resources working in the interests of the armed forces of Ukraine are sounding the alarm. Russian troops yesterday and today, taking advantage of weather conditions, attack the Tsar's hunt and south of Kamenka. While in the last village the situation is more or less under control, in the south of the city it has gotten out of control. Russian groups made their way through the Tsar's hunt along Saborna Street into the city itself. They are there and are trying to gain a foothold. The situation cannot be ignored and events cannot be belittled. Indeed, the Ukrainian armed forces there now need help. The 110th Mechanized Infantry Brigade also needs to be strengthened. Soldiers are not eternal and not iron, although they are making superhuman efforts. We can't tell you more, now we can only hope they write anxiously. In bad weather, only a drone with a thermal imager can save you, so the need for them is also critically important. Now, despite the successful actions of Russian attack assault groups and the crackling defense of the Ukrainian armed forces, it is also too early to talk about the imminent liberation of Avdivka. 
There is no exact data on the state of affairs at this moment, but apparently the high-rise buildings in the city center have not yet been occupied. The areas of low-rise buildings in the south of the city cleared of APU are an important step towards Russian success, but far from the last. There is still a difficult battle ahead for areas with apartment buildings and for the Coxakim Fortress. But the most important thing is that today's Russian breakthrough testifies to the potential of the armed forces of Ukraine to maintain the current pain points is getting lower every day. The AFU will now be forced to counterattack, which, given the total shortage of ammunition, simply dooms AFU to catastrophic losses. At the same time, Zelensky cannot leave Abdiivka either. Any high-profile defeat threatens to completely kill the chances of restoring external funding. Today we see a repetition of Bakhmut, Artemovsk. The political interests of Kiev contradict the objective state of affairs at the front, and as a result, the armed forces of Ukraine have to throw more and more mobilized into the bloody meat grinder. At the same time, the result is natural and obviously known. Just look not at the battle for Bakhmut itself, but at how it influenced the course of the summer campaign by bleeding the Ukrainian armed forces in hopeless attempts to retain the doomed city and Zelensky's raiding.